Welcome back, you're watching Mario Miles, and as promised, we listen to your comments. So, we will not do another giant miles on your screen, because I got comments saying that was quite scary for yourself and your animals. So we're trying a slightly different set today, we're not using the green screen. Let me know what you think about this shot. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how we nearly lost our DJ Mavic Air, flying an automated glitchy flight in Romania. The problem here is, as a sort of relatively new drone pilot, we wanted to fly some steady shots using the, the Litchi app and we had programmed to flight with an expectation that it would fly for 8 minutes. Between different waypoints we had set it up to fly at different speeds. Now little did we know when it loses connection with the remote control, if it flies too far away or if it flies behind an obstacle that blocks the signal with the remote controller, it continues to fly at the speed it was going at when it lost control. It will complete the mission but it will continue at the same speed. So if you've told it to fly fast and far away, slow around a point of interest, that is far away, and then fast back, because you're looking to complete the flight within the battery life, if it loses signal with you when it's at the slow flying point, it will continue to fly at that speed until it regains signal with you. This means if you are planning for it to return back to you fast and it's returning back to you at half or quarter of the speed you planned it to, that can significantly increase your flight time and could result in a fatal crash. Well, this is what kind of happened to us. We were flying over water. We had planned it to fly fast over the water to a point of interest, fly slow around the point of interest, and then fly fast back. When it got to the point of interest, it went behind some trees and lost signal with us. We waited until the planned eight minutes had completed and the drone had not come back to us and had not reconnected signal with the controller. As you can imagine, this drone has 18 minutes of battery at best. So, you know, it takes a minute to take off and get up to altitude, then it flies the flight. So, you're 9 minutes in on your, let's say, 15 minute battery and you don't have your drone back, it's not followed the flight plan. It's a squeaky bum moment, right? So, we went into panic mode and started running up the side of the water until we reconnected with the drone, at which point as soon as it reconnects with the controller, it then picks up the flight plan from where it currently is and returns to the speed that you told it to fly at. That's fine. We managed to get it back, but had we not ran up the side of the water until we reconnected with the drone, it would have continued to fly back to us at the slower speed until it reconnected with the controller. The problem is it may not have got back to us. The battery may have got too low, and then that would trigger an automatic land of the drone. If the drone gets, I believe it's below 10%, I could be wrong, it automatically starts to descend, and if it gets below something like 5%, it triggers an auto land. If you're flying over water, you really don't want your drone to auto land. These things are good, but they're not underwater drones. So, let's take a look at the mission. I'll we'll talk about the variables that we set up and how we programmed it. We'll talk about what went wrong, and I'll give you some tips as to steps I'm going to take in the future when planning what she flights to avoid these kind of incidents and potentially catastrophic event in the future because I want to protect my drone. And I like Litchi, but this is a learning process. I like to think my channel is a learning channel, so let's learn together. I'll teach you what I've learned so you don't have to have these experiences yourself in the future. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is Litchi and the mission that we had planned for flying over the Barrage Bikas. Before we get started, let's go over some of the absolute basics in Litchi. The purple circles with the numbers in them are the waypoints, and if you click on one of those, then you get the waypoint settings, which has multiple variables as we previously discussed, such as altitude, speed, curve, heading, point of interest, and so on and so forth. The sort of blue triangle underneath the point of interest icon represents the drone. Now this doesn't represent the direction the drone is flying in, this actually represents the direction that the camera of the drone will be pointing in. So the drone could be pointing left and the drone could be flying right, for example. So the blue markers are the points of interest. And this helps you set the direction that the drone camera will be pointing and what it will be pointing at in terms of the inclination of the camera and the orientation of the drone. The altitudes in the Litchi missions are relative to the point you take off, not relative 
to sea level. So bear that in mind. And that's kind of the basics. The, the drone will take off and fly from wherever you take off. If, for example, you were taking off over here, it would take off, climb to 30 meters, which is the altitude of the first waypoint, and then make a direct flight towards waypoint one, at which point it will take the actions of waypoint one. So, for example, here, waypoint one tells the drone to start recording, focus on point of interest one, which is actually on the dam here, to start flying towards waypoint two at the cruising speed. Now, you might be saying, what is the cruising speed? It's a good question. So, in the settings, you set the cruising speed for the mission. What I had set here is the cruising speed of 12 kilometers per hour. Um, so the cruising speed, as mentioned, is 12 kilometers per hour for this flight. Let's ignore the first section of the flight here, because although it didn't quite give me the video output I was hoping for, I can talk about that in a future video um, and the lessons I'm learning from there. I want to kind of introduce Litchie in a piecemeal fashion in this channel. So let's skip to the topic of the video, which is what happened and how we nearly lost the drone. So ignoring waypoints one through five, let's start at waypoint six. Waypoint six has a setting of to be flying at an altitude of 60 meters above the takeoff point. But the point here is that you'll see we had set the speed of this waypoint six to waypoint seven for the drone to be flying at 35 kilometers per hour. Now, that is nearly triple the cruising speed for the mission, which is fine. And the reason we did that, as mentioned, is because it's traveling 681 meters away. And we want to get the mission to complete within 15 minutes or less because of the battery on the TGI Mavic Air. You want to have the sort of the journey getting to your point of interest to be as fast as possible. So we told it to fly at 35 kilometers per hour. Now, when I guess to waypoint 7, because I wanted to do this sort of semi-circle shot around the boathouse, when it got to waypoint 7, it slows down to the cruising speed, which, as we previously discussed, was 12 kilometers per hour. And as it hit waypoint 8, it lost signal with our remote controller, which was here at waypoint 1 with myself. Because if I quickly switch here to satellite mode, you can see that the direct line of sight from where the drone would be at point eight back to point one where I am has to go through these trees and the signal got lost in the trees there. So we had a nice line of sight radio signal up to point seven and then we lost it at point eight. And because it was coming then following the path nine, 10 and then back home, it never had a clean line of sight back to the remote controller. It flew seven, eight, nine at cruising speed, 10, it was supposed to go back up to 35 kilometers per hour. It didn't do this. Because it had lost signal with the remote controller, it continued flying at cruising speed after it hit waypoint 10. So this is what it's meant to do. The drone is meant to continue the mission if it loses signal with the remote controller, but it will continue flying at the speed it was going when it lost signal with the remote control. If we look here, and the mission is planned, as you can see at the top here, for eight minutes. Here's the problem. If it's actually flying back at 12 kilometers an hour, so I can change this speed here. That changes the flight time to now 11 minutes to complete the mission. That's an additional three minutes. And believe me, when you are letting your drone fly by itself for an automated mission, that extra three minutes feels like a lifetime. And we kind of panicked. What happened is I actually ran up this road here, and I think it would have been about roughly here we reconnected with the drone. What happened is when it reconnected to the remote controller, it then jumped back up to the 35 kilometers an hour that we had told it to fly. If there's wind and you've added an extra three minutes to your flight time, then you may not get the drone back. And worst case scenario, the battery gets low and it triggers an auto landing somewhere over water. Well, if that happens, you're having a splashdown, you're having a bad day and you're not getting your drone back. What I would recommend for future flights and what I will be doing for future flights myself is I will be setting my cruising speed to the maximum speed I want the flight to go at 
And I will never set the drone to fly at less than 75% of that speed when doing a fly around uh, an object. That way, if the drone does lose signal when it is flying around something when it's further away from me, it's not going to be at one third of the speed, which is what I had the problem in this flight. It will be flying at three quarters of the speed. You might take an extra minute, possibly, for the flight, but the risk of a splashdown is much lower. Okay, so I've been droning on, excuse the pun, for quite some time, and I know you're keen to see the video. So, what I want to say is, the drone video you're about to see has some of the footage from this automatic flight, but not all of it. It also has incorporated footage from our live stream that we did that wasn't 100% successful because we were having some connectivity issues with the 4G at the area. I hope you enjoy the footage, I hope you've learned something from this video, and if you liked it, consider subscribing. If not, that's fine. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.